the nation all around the world. We men are longing to be free, no longer in the shadows, us to stay behind, but side by side in true equality. So sing the songs for women everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease. So sing the song for women everywhere. Equality, development, and peace. Women can't be silent when all around the world. People hurt and hungry children cry. We sing a song for justice and development to hold the rights of all the people high. So sing the song for women everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease. So sing the song. For women everywhere, equality, development, and peace. Women now are working to build a better world, where love and peace can rest on every shore. Where men lay down their weapons and learn to love and share, and people work to bring an end to war. So sing a song. So sing a song. So sing a song for women everywhere. Let it ring around the world and never, never cease. So sing a song. So sing a song for women everywhere. Equality, development, and peace. So sing a song. So we men everywhere, let it ring around the world and never, never cease. So sing a song. So we men everywhere, equality, development, and peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please guys be seated. Women Entrepreneurs and Professionals Development Network webbed in in collaboration with the FCOAS Federation of Business Women and Entrepreneurs, Febway, and Bumara Foundation, joined the rest of the world in celebrating the International Women's Day on Wednesday, March 8, 2023, at Neca House in Alausa, Lagos, with the theme Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality, hashtag Embrace Equity. The event was a gathering of notable women from all walks of life who are leaders in their various career spaces, including digital gurus and students from Oregon Junior High School, Oregon Senior High School, Ikeja Senior High School, and Omole Senior Grammar School, and their teachers as they rub minds with one another. The event kicked off by a welcome address presented by the Chief Operating Officer of Webden in the person of Mrs. Afyong Israel Mbaga, on behalf of Iyalude Alaba Lawson, MFR FIOD JP, who doubles as the global convener of Webden and as the national president of ECOWAS February. My dear sisters and brothers that are happen to be here with us, without God, I am nobody. I thank God so much for a day such as this, that among us here, we have timber and calibers, women of substance, women that you can relate with globally. I want to appreciate all of us for finding time to come here to celebrate womanhood. The whole essence of us being here is to say, God, we thank you for creating us, making us to be who we are today as a woman. And I thank God for whoever's initiated this uh, International Women's Day, a day set aside to honor women. You can agree with me, we all deserve to be honored. Thank you. I want to thank our son that is here with us, Mrs. Funke Akwa, who I admire so much, though we don't get in touch all the time, but 
She's always someone dear and near to my heart. I thank you for finding time to come to let us feel you because we want to listen to you, telling us what it is to embrace equity. When my sister said, ah, I have a sister that will come, honestly, I didn't think it would be that easy. Because immediately she hung up, she said, she's coming. I said, wow. So we were all jubilating on the platform. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. She's a son, senior advocate of Nigeria. So we thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much. For all my digitex that are here, gurus and experts, right from our in-house IT guru, Mrs. Stephen Inwa, who happens to be the chairman of this planning committee. We thank you so much for the job well done. Our IT gurus, in person of Mrs. Adiola Eka, thank you for coming. Okay, Olivia. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you so much. We will all learn from you today. Uh, my sister Aja, yes, I welcome you. <laughs> Thank you. This one is your show anyway. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Um, please, before leaving here today, make sure that you get each and every one of us, talk to us, interact with us, let us know who you are. The essence of us coming here is to know herself. Network, what do you do? Our young ones, what do you want to see coming up in life? Talk to us, we are here for you. And like I said, there's a message that I had this morning. It says, get in touch with your friends. Talk, laugh, and enjoy. Live your passion, live your life. Once in a while, do things that you love to do. Don't look for your happiness in others. You too deserve some happiness because if you are not happy, you cannot make others happy. Everyone needs you and you too need your own care and love. Women should come forward to help and guide other women who are unable to handle their personal stress and give them a hand to uplift their confidence. Let us help ourselves and make this life worthwhile. We are all have only one life to live. Life is beautiful. Please, liaise with one another, network, have fun. There's a DJ here. Put on your dancing shoes. Just throw down and have fun. Thank you all for coming. Goodwill messages were also presented by the collaborating associations. Haji Abola Mose, president of Bumara Foundation, was present to give a goodwill message. It is a great honor and opportunity for me speaking to you today. I'm, I'm here speaking on behalf of my organization, Bumara Foundation. Bumara Foundation aim is to create an all-inclusive society devoid of poverty and prejudice. Over the years, we have been in business of caring for the needy since the year 2002. In order to create opportunity for underprivileged persons so they can make the best of their lives. Today, I stand here in celebration of International Women's Day, which the UN Women and the United Nations are celebrating under the team, Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. We are here to recognize the tremendous impact innovations and technology change can have in achieving gender equality. Now more than ever, Advance in technology have opened up new avenues for growth, opportunity, and empowerment for women. We have seen the power of technology used to eliminate gender disparity in the workplace, in education, and in healthcare. Technology has enabled women to pursue their aspiration and to participate in economic and social development on a global scale. The power of technology has also enabled us to create more equitable and accessible education opportunities. Technology has allowed us to bridge digital divide that has traditionally separated women from education and economic opportunity. Our area of focus at Pumara Foundation includes invert mortality and child rights, rehabilitation of displaced persons, youth empowerment program, 
job creation, promotion of the rights of persons living with disabilities, in making opportunity equals as preserved in relevant laws, and awareness campaign on social vice and evil. The organization constantly reaffirmed its commitment to this to, to this endeavor to use three dimensions strategy instruments of education, advocacy, empowerment, and, and, and by determination what the problem are. What action needs to be taken and how to carry out this action? In the future, we hope to regularly carry out projects aimed at ensuring that issues women and girls face are addressed and they have improved access to digital technology. This is because investment into the future of women and girls is always a worthy investment and an investment into a better future for all. At this junction, permit me to say a big thank you to my mentor, a woman of great honor, a role model by excellence, Yalu Dalaban Lonsin, for her help to carry us along. And to my twin sister, WDP and CEO, Mrs. Abin Banga, for this collaboration. I wish all attendees at this conference a good deliberation. Thank you and God bless you. Happy International Women's Day. Mrs. Tessie Jibodu, National Secretary ECOWAS February, also presented a Google message. ECOWAS February's commitment is to facilitate and promote women-owned enterprise in sub-Saharan region. <clears throat> it also promises to organize sustainable development projects, programs in small-scale enterprise. It also trains on skill acquisition as well as identification of talents, skills, cottage industries using local raw materials. The ECOWAS countries are Anglo, Francophone, and English speaking. ECOWAS February Nigeria is the sixth chapter to be launched after those in Benin Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Niger, and Togo. It was launched in Nigeria on Monday, 27 February 2012, at the Sheraton Hotels, Ikeja, Lagos, by the President Ekwas Febwe, Madam Candide Lagwede. All other Ekwas countries were present at the launching. In Nigeria, we also have about 16 states where we have Ekwas Febwe. All other countries uh, we are also present at the launching of Nigerian chapter. The national president of the Nigerian chapter is Yalode Alabalo Singh. In February 2012, February Nigeria was restructured to make it more vibrant with people of like mindset, where Princess Omotala Omole was chosen as the national coordinator. We have since then done well participating in seminars in and outside Nigeria, workshops, exhibitions, and meetings with ECOWAS countries and our international partners. Our ITC were also very active as a member of ANWBN, which is the umbrella body for all Nigerian women businesses. We also have partners in Africa, Leap, She Trade, and interested in Nigeria. Mrs. Treasures Uchebu, National Secretary, Association of Women in Business, AMWIP, also presented a Google message on behalf of her association. The Association of Nigerian Women in Business is a strong voice advocating for the social and economic rights and empowerment of women entrepreneurs and their businesses. And um, to all the amazing women of Women Entrepreneurs and Professional Development Network, WEP, uh, WEPD, and her International Women's Day 2023 collaborating partners, Boomara Foundation and ECOWAS Febway, which we had their profile earlier, with the theme Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. Equity is the first step to equality. Equity is about breaking barriers that limit women's access to information, 
access to data, access to devices, access to assist, assistive technology when we work in case of women with disabilities, which is, is the sector I work in, that you saw all the clapping, especially for the deaf. And access to high level networking opportunities, which WEPD is known for. So for us to have a gender equal world, we must embrace equity. Embracing equity means we must break the barriers and biases that limit women's development, innovation, technology, and social economic advancement. So today is not a day for long speech. That's our speech. What we want to look forward to is an enriching discussion from all the panelists and the um, heavy faculty that has been given to us today by the three collaborating organizations. So in embracing equity, I want us to just please put our hands this way and do the equity sign. Just tap yourself. Tap yourself. You are telling yourself, well done. You know the other time we told you, well done. Then squeeze it. You are embracing equity. Speaking to the audience on embracing equity, Mrs. Funke Agbo, a well-learned and experienced senior advocate of Nigeria, San, in her presentation, spoke on the challenges women face regarding equity even in the workplace. She enjoins all to be equitable and not look down on anyone. Equal. Students are here, teachers are here. I went to the dictionary. It means the same. Equal, the word equal means the same in quality, in size, in degree of value. So when you say something is equal, one thing is identical to the other. It's uniform, it's the same. That is equality, it's the same. And so in terms of rights, we are talking about having the same rights, having the same privileges, having the same ability, having the same rank. Now, we're talking about rank. I'm a senior advocate of Nigeria. I'm one of maybe 30 women. When I became senior advocate of Nigeria, I was number 20. Since 1978, when they started having senior advocates, they have been almost 500 men. And even today, in 2023, they are not up to 40. So, as I said, the road to that was not paved by equity. There was no equity whatsoever in our path. And so, by being here, we are just really blessed and lucky that there is something called International Women's Day. And there has been this discussion about gender parity for a long time. And now it has come to stay. Today, there's no woman in Nigeria. Okay, let me say Lagos. Let me not go far because I don't really know. That doesn't know that today is International Women's Day. Half the women in Lagos are speaking somewhere or the other. After here, I'm going to somewhere to speak about equality as well. So we have to accept that too. It is our calling as women to do so. We're talking about hospital, we're talking about education, we're talking about children. There's nobody here in this room that I believe who, apart from the business that they do, whether they're even running, just running a home, are not involved in some organization that is looking after other people or other children or something. It is just not possible because there's so much lack that we know that even if, even if we have small, we have to give part of it to somebody else. Otherwise, we are not living any life of purpose. There's no point to it. And you can't be sitting in your house feeling happy when other people that you can help because these people are in your immediate environment all the time. There's no day that you will not get a text. Ah, I need this. Oh, I need that. And you have to. God will help all of us to help others. All right, so when we get to the issue of equity, equity is about fairness. Fairness. So in order to get to equality, there has to be fairness. In law, we say sometimes that the equities are not equal, which means simply that everybody is not equal. So even among the women, there is no, there can be a lack of equity. And so we need to help each other Help each other. That is what equity is all about. So, equality is the opportunity. We have it. Then, are you able to access that opportunity properly like everybody else? You may not be able to do that. And when we're talking about equity is not being equal, I think 
think about school children, girls in particular, in some countries, in some places. You have 14 year olds, 15 year olds, girls in secondary school, and then you find that some are not able to come to school, they are not coming to school. And maybe the normal thing. that they have. That is the equity. Gender equality and gender equity are related terms but have different meanings. Gender equality assumes that everyone benefits from the same opportunities and resources. It contemplates providing men and women with equal opportunities and access to resources. It implies that an individual's rights, responsibilities and opportunities will not be determined by the sex they are assigned at birth. Gender equity is therefore simply ensuring that the opportunities and resources provided to everyone, to everyone satisfactorily meets each person's needs. Three, I would just want to mention the three barriers to gender equality that I've read about. One is unconscious bias. Second is lack of representation. And the third is privilege. But I want to dwell on the first two, lack, um, unconscious bias. What does unconscious bias mean? It means that you have, you have a prejudice, but you don't actually realize that you do. And you go and say, oh, I'm not prejudiced, so I don't need to know anything about gender equality or anything. What is unconscious bias? It's looking at somebody and thinking that you know what the person is without knowing anything about that person. Yeah. And these are things that are ingrained in with us. Yeah. Now, the benefits of young people here today, we did not have the benefits of having women talk to us about life, about things, about that they could get to where there were, there were no women prime ministers, there were no women leaders, there was nothing. There were, the, you know, your, the, your mentors were women, but these were intelligent women, but they were in the market, they were, you know, not in the high business echelon, you see what I mean. There were secretaries, there were nurses, and things like that. However, today, when we talk about before I jump to, I, I'm trying to talk about unconscious bias, but I'm already jumping to lack of representation, but let me stay with unconscious bias. And this unconscious bias is ingrained with us, within us, traditionally, society tells you we are supposed to be like this. And because you cannot see anybody else looking like what society says you should look like, you can't even aspire to be anything other than what like, um, society expects you to look like. Now, I can give an example of unconscious bias because I used to think that I was not biased about anything. But the unconscious bias was like almost like a reverse bias. So we had this very important law, um, company coming into Nigeria. And all the commercial law firms, one of us, uh, we were one of them, wanted to, they wanted to, they, used, they called it a beauty parade. So these international organizations come to Nigeria, they're trying to look for a law firm, usually in Lagos, so all the law firms, they have told us they are coming. So they'll come, sit with us, talk to us, go to the next one, go to the next one. So everybody's trying to win the work from this law firm, from this company. So I remember they came to the office this day, and they came, the partners were coming, showing up the office, feeling happy, leading them from the door. There were three, it was a three white, there were three white men and one lady. So the three white men, big white men, looking like MD, chairman, president, whatever. So we're talking to them. Ah, so how are you? How are you finding Lagos? We are working them to the conference room so that we can sit down and talk. There was this lady. She well, she would carry the what do they call it? This knapsack. What do they call it? Yes, knapsack. What people wear to carry to school. Small lady. She was like Indianish looking, very tiny woman was walking behind them. Nobody talked to her. We're just talking to those big, big men. So we sat down. We sat down. The next thing, they now said she was the one talking. She was the leader of the delegation, almost died. 
She was the leader of the delegation. She was the most senior person there. She was like this, an Indian looking woman, very tiny. She just wore one dress. She put uh, this thing on her back. Those men were white, tall, wearing suits, looking, and they were walking with us. They didn't follow, they, didn't, they were not walking behind them. We were just walking like they were in front, we were moving with them. Sat them down and everything. I thought she was a secretary or something. I almost died. That day, I said, in my life, I will never make that assumption. And this was about, maybe about 10 years ago. That, in, those, in those days, we're not talking about gender bias. We had those biases ourselves. We had the biases ourselves, but I didn't even know. That's why it's unconscious. You don't know until it hits you in the face. And it really hit me in that day, because she was a woman. And we just assumed that she was the secretary, or she was, I don't know what she was. Three big white men were just following them. Yes, okay, yes, okay. They, they, this was just visiting you. We had not even read the conference room for us to sit down. When we sat down, and she was the one that said, Oh, so well, welcome. <laughs> I cannot forget it. So, this unconscious bias, we need to think about it. We need to, even teachers, when you're teaching your students, when some students are slow, you don't know, you have to find out what it is. Why is it that they are doing that way or they are acting that way? We have to think about it critically and let's not make assumptions about people. So that's um, the one about the conscious bias. Second one is lack of representation. When you can't see what others see, when you can't see a reflection of yourself in anybody, you can't see a woman leader, you can't see a woman head of Coca-Cola. You can't see. You don't see them. You don't see a woman head of Apple. You don't see a woman head of USC. You don't see a woman head of First Bank until recently. You don't see all of that. For younger people, they don't know. They don't, if they don't see it, then they cannot aspire to it. So we have a lot of work to do. And now it's all open. It's all possible because they are talking. And they're talking to the men, and we also have to have the support of the men. Mrs. Adeola Eka, a digital tech guru, who spoke on the theme for the day, Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality, emphasized that women can become tall in their various spheres through digital knowledge, which she explained in the Pigeon Palance, women who savvy ways of effectively using the digital space to excel in their careers and businesses. It's no news that technology has got to stop. It's actually no use. So, it has explodingly come to change the norm of the world in which we live, we work, and play. And any one of us who hasn't embraced it since COVID, since COVID, like um, my sister was saying, there are people who made it billions, yes, during COVID-19. There are Presently, there are kids, there are children, there are ladies making money in the digital space. Even while in school, there are people making money while in the digital space. Not to worry, we'll talk about that. So, now, anyone who's not been on it needs to raise up. You need to raise up. The best time to be in it was then. The next best time is now. Now. Today. Today. Now we want Sabia. To embrace it for multiple reasons. Now, innovative technology has come to give unlimited possibilities to us as women. How? Digital innovative technology has come to make our dreams come true. I'll tell you one thing. It actually made it's making my dreams come true. Whereby I'm able to, at the end of the day, I went through, um, I call the Nigerian education, I call our education the conventional education. It's the norm, the norm education, where it has to be theoretical, not really practical. But the digital space, actually, I discovered the unconventional education. I discovered it in the digital space. I discovered tech helped me to discover that. It helped me to know that while I am cooking 
or I am picking beans in my house. I am working on digital strategy. I am, I am talking to the CEO of companies and I am telling them how they can actually put their goods and services online. How they are able to put their brands, how their brands are able to grow visibly online. While I have, my laptop is in front of me, my phone is with me, I'm on the call, but I'm picking beans in my house. That's digital innovation. So digital innovation has come to give us all. It has come to give us everything we can do. Um, our sister was talking about then you had to, she would be at work and then they'll be asking her, where are the kids? Who are the kids with? You know, but now we can be at home with the kids and we're working and we're making millions and we're talking we're topping companies. We're controlling companies. We're CEOs. We're COOs. We are, at the end of the day, we are board members. But we, because of digital tech, it gives us the flexibility. It gives us the versatility. It ensures that at the end of the day, you live your dreams right where you are. It gives you the world in your space that you do not have to have so much money but at the end of the day you are making you are using what you have to at the end of the day to multiply and make millions so that's what digital innovation and technology has brought for us that's what it's given us now we have I would say that, okay, initially, we had the usual Martha's ministry. It's our norm, Martha's ministry. But right now, digital innovation has come to make us smart. In fact, smartest is what I would say. So even though we are at home, like I said, we are powerfully sitting in economic empowerment seats with dreams becoming reality. So thanks to the digital space opportunity, like Google, it starts from Google. A whole lot of people do not know the vast opportunity that a Google mail, just Gmail, gives to you. It gives you freebies. It gives you, um, as in, it gives you visibility. It gives you flexibility just by going on Google or by having a Google Mail, a Gmail. Now, a Gmail is your leverage to a lot of global opportunities. A Gmail, as simple as it seems, it's, it, it's an opportunity to global opportunities. So, now, apart from Google, we also have um, okay, presently, I would say that Google has, apart from the business, they just ended the Google My Business. But now they put it into a system whereby you can have your shop on your phone and it is directly connected to the Google Map. Linked directly to Google Map from your phone. Just your phone. You can have payments. You have
achievement. So, I'm talking to small business owners right now. For young ladies, there are opportunities that avail you in the digital space. If you check, I'm one of the first people to get that digital certification, especially in the Microsoft space. But it wasn't easy. There were sleepless nights. There were days of me breaking down a bit in the hospital. And let me tell you another thing about me. Now, my genotype is SS. Yeah. That's single cell anemia. But you would not know if I don't tell you. So this is a child, a girl child, that they say will not live long to marry, to have children, talk less of to have a career, talk less of to not have a unique service, to be in a male-dominated environment or industry. So, me, it is very, very possible. All you need to do is make up your mind. Digital and technology, they are not difficult. We have our own. It's very easy. It makes us, it helps us. There are platforms that ease us with. And yes, we also, we help women and we teach. We teach girls, we teach women on further um, how you can further leverage the opportunities in this digital and tech space to be earning an income while you're still doing what you're doing to become that smart, virtuous woman. The digital world is on a daily basis birthing digital entrepreneurs like Mrs. Oke Aribi, who spoke on equipping yourself for economic empowerment. There's what they call volunteering. And start building your skills now. Because what the things I did at your age is what is feeding me. I studied biochemistry. I was in the sciences. But when you meet me, like seriously, you have to be looking at test tubes every day. As in, by the time I was done with university, I was like, ah, that cannot be my portion in the name of Jesus. I cannot be looking inside. I said, how me? So the skills I got then was what I translated. And yeah, I'm who I am today by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, so I, I went to school, studied biochemistry, came out, started working. And in 2018, the day that I had to make a drastic decision, I left my house. I stay in first access. I work in uh, Ikeja Jari. And I go to work at 1.30 p.m. I was like, how? Oh. As in, I was tired, I was exhausted. I was like, something has got to give. I can't, I can't do this. As in, people kill themselves. You see, people slumming, dying, and it is the work culture. There's no work like life balance. Who wants to hear that? I got done one thirty. I got to work one thirty. They don't even say I was traffic. They don't care. Why are you late? Even though I left my house at six thirty a.m., so I was like, ah, this is not going. It's not possible. And I have two children. Then I had a five-year-old and a two-year-old. How to put them inside crutch at a really early age? My husband's job, he, he goes, he's a structural engineer, so he's not always home. So I was like, mommy, daddy is not around, mommy is not. We did not beg the student to come to this world. We brought them into this world, so something has got to give. So I'm like, so what do I do? This 9 to 5 is not, it's not looking like it. It's not as if at the end of the month, it never happened. At the end of the year, I'm like, God, all of my labor, this, for this. You know, so I, I started thinking, what can I do? What do I do? I'm a Christian, so I had to go to God in prayer. Like, God, I, I can't I can't do this. Nobody can pay me. This is not paying me. I have to be around for my children. I'm not really a career woman at the I I am more family oriented. And I'm not a lazy woman because I started working at 16. So I can't just sit down at home. So I was like, what can I do? And then I now started saying, I now looked inward, inward. What are the things I love to do? I know I love to talk, I love to write, I love to create things. So I was like, okay, 
what kind of skills have I been learning over the years? What are the skills that are transmissible? I was like, okay, when I was that age in secondary school, I did a lot of writing. I write newsletters, I write short stories, and all that. Okay, fine, I can write. I had worked as an admin assistant. I had worked in the office environment. You know, there were a lot of things. Okay, I was like, okay, so these are skills I can, I can, I have. So I now went to online. So what do I do? What kind of jobs can I start to do? So I now had what they call virtual assistance job. I was like, okay, how is that? So I researched, researched, researched. After researching, I just don't say that, okay, now I have business. So I now started getting knowledge. A lot of us would just jump into business because that's what everybody's doing. Why? Why would you? Because same people, they are doing this. You ought to be in the levels. That's what they call saturation of market. What will differentiate you? So I took time. I took courses. Ah, at a point, my younger sister is like, what, what, what is this? You yourself, you know more than the teacher. I said, please, I'm not ready. Let me continue learning. And you know, you let to the point that you've built enough confidence that when you come out and open your mouth, the world will listen. But sometimes you just run into things, you don't plan, you don't research, you don't, you just, just do it because you now become like the rest. There's nothing, nothing special. Not, nothing, there's nothing, there's no reason why I'll come to you. So I took my time in researching, building myself so that I had a differentiating factor that when okay talks to you, I just want to work with you. I've been to conferences like this where. I just come and when I'm done, when I interact, and they're just like, I don't know, I just want to work with you. I'm like, why don't I just I don't I just I just like your person and you know the way you talk and all that like ah, it's the grace of God. But then I also believe that I have prepared myself to the point that I know what I'm about, I know what I can deliver, and I'm ready to do that. So I listed a, a couple of things that we should do before setting out. Number one, know that thing that you can do, especially for young people. Don't, don't don't live your life to chance. Be intentional. Be intentional. We are in the twenty twenty. We are in twenty twenty three. The world is moving fast. I have my eight year old, so I'm a digital person. My eight year old, I started learning Canva. I don't know if you've ever heard of Canva. Yes, because she's eight now. By ten, I should be able to pay her peanuts, even though it's peanuts. Like okay, well, someone said I should design for her. Yeah, I started training her in skills like that. So know, know, know what you want to do. Be certain of what you want to do. Look inward. Then look around you. What need is there that you can solve with the things you have inside? Don't be too fast. Take time. Know yourself. Master the skill. So that when you come out, there's that difference with the Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a process. We have to go through this process. Then get knowledge. Get Spend the money. Don't hold it. Spend. You will make it back. Your arrow eyes. The money I spent for all my chains are ah, made. I've made. I've made it back many times over. So then get knowledge. Then network. When I started, me, I'm a loner. I'm not the friendly. I like my space. I like my time. But the business was crawling until I started joining women networks, and then I did free work. So my free work was what helped me get testimonials from people. So if you can cook. You don't, nobody knows you can cook. Go and be cooking for people. Cook one, two, one person, get testimonial, cook for another person, get testimonial, then publish the testimonial. As you said, the testimonial is so many different ways. Visibility is key. Last three weeks, I needed to make a cake. I have a very good friend that lives in my area. She makes cakes, but she never puts it up. So it, there's this other lady that makes cakes. On her status, 247, Miriam's delight is always putting cake every, everywhere. On her social media, she's always putting cake. This lady, that I see all the time when I now need that cake was the person I went to me. She got that fifty k. But what am I putting out there? Visibility. What can you do? The thing that I can do, please. Your most of startup is not for funny video and politics. Funny video and politics will not feed you. That thing you can do, tell it to us. Not that you'll be selling all the time, more, but you know how to use storytelling to make people know that. Oh, can you do this thing? Yes. Use your social media platform. My first two jobs were people that I didn't know. They were like. I shall know I was posting on Instagram, I was consistent on Instagram. And people, and they were not even in the country, in the UK and in Canada, called me, oh, I heard that you do this, can you do this, do that? I said, yeah, before, yes, I can do it though. And that is how I got my gig. So what are you using your social media platforms for? To be looking fine, to be saying hello, hi. Hello, to be making money, praise the Lord. So you have to be intentional about these things. So I've said a lot of things now. Mm, and I think on, on the final notes, yes. You collaborate. They say together we will go further. If you think only you want to do, only you want to do, you know, only you will do it though. But the what's me when I collaborate, I will do it in two years. You you will do it in like ten years. So collaborate. You can collaborate with someone like you 
or you can collaborate with someone that can complement you so that together you can go further. And I thank God for this, this kind of platform. It's really, really wonderful. Look for your kind, look for your tribe, come together, do this together. That's how we met. We met through a gathering and we have forged forces. She has known my network, I have known her network, and together we are killing it, we are crushing it. While our in-house digital guru, head of Webtain IT cluster, Mrs. Ifeinwa Adeshida, an IT enthusiast and entrepreneur, spoke on digital technology and opportunity for business growth. I know a lot of us are entrepreneurs. And the beauty about this technology is that we can use it to optimize our business and make it more effective. Gone are those days that we are afraid that, oh, I'll leave my shop. Somebody is going to cheat me. Somebody is going to uh, steal my money. Uh, the shop girl will not uh, do what I, I expect her to do. So with this digital technology, most business women, you need to tap into the knowledge. And they are very easy to learn. We all have our phones like the other speakers have said, but what are you using those phones for? Instead of taking pictures, why don't you learn things that will enhance your businesses? Let me give you an instance. Do you know that that phone you have with you, you can go to Google Play Store. You can download a software that can help you with creating invoices, that can help you manage your inventory, that can help you to even have your customer KYC, know your customer. There are several applications online that you can use. And Google has made it so simple. As people are chunking in these apps, you can leverage on them. For those of you that you can even do your invoice on the go. Meaning that if you download these apps, like there's a quick book. App. That app, you can register your customer, you can do your invoicing, you can put your inventory on it. You can even use it to know what you have sold, the profit you have made, and also know the tax you are supposed to pay government, so that you don't have to wait until the time you want to pay tax. Most uh, apps and uh, technology uh, things are so, so seamless these days. It's not way back in the era when we started our IT. You need to employ somebody that will help you to do it, but an accountant. Those are the days of pitch tree that will help you. But now you have all these hacks at your fingertips. Another thing I want to talk about with technology is that where you have like a physical store, gone are the errors when you are free. You can install a CCTV camera in your store that you can monitor from your phone. So you don't have to be afraid that, oh, I'm in London. I don't know what's happening in my store. You can be anywhere in the world to watch what is going on in your store. And there are various security, uh, uh, security uh, technology that are attached to this CCTV. Aside, you, it also helps you to monitor your environment. There is also something that is called renewable energy. Like if you want to cut costs on the energy supply in your in your office, especially now that NEPA is not constant. We encourage people that have business that are physical to have solar energy in their store. Then another thing I want to mention is that there is this thing they call, like they said already, virtual assistant. You can have, if, if you're somebody that uh, go to ShopRite, ShopRite, if you have their WhatsApp number, they have all these uh, virtual assistants that, if you want to know what they are having promo on in their store, once you go to their WhatsApp, they just tell you that click one to know what is in VI store. Click two to know what is in a Kedja store. So by the time you click, you just see the pictures of things they have on promo. Those are what you can do as a business person to enhance your business. 
Another thing, if you notice, uh, like you mentioned, uh, virtual assistant, that's what these banks use. Like a very bank, they have this new lady they call Ziza. Ziva. Yes. You know, every question you ask, that's what the virtual assistant is doing behind. You can also implement that for your own business. That when you are not around and somebody sends a message to your WhatsApp, you will configure it to automate and answer as if you are the one in that place. Then also, for those of you that are into fashion, there are so many things you can do with print interest. And also, there are some digital software you can use to do your fashion patterns. That you don't even need to travel anywhere to see your clients. You can always send it to them online. Like they have mentioned, for small business, gone are the days of paying money for anyone to do a website for you. Google has made the whole world seamless. I want to encourage every woman here. If you know that you don't have an Instagram page, I will wait and ensure you have one. Yes. And I want you to follow all the associations. Wedding, Bumara, and February, Echoas February. We are all on the platform so that you can gain from what we're doing. If you don't have a social media presence, you need to take your time before you leave here today, create one. Start posting your businesses. The world has gone beyond somebody coming to your store. The opportunity came for guests to rub minds with the facilitators during the question and answer session, respectively handled by Mrs. Uduak Oludemi, the Lagos State Coordinator of Webden, and Mrs. Dorcas James, Secretary of ECOWAS February. How have you, over the years, in your career path, being able to navigate the issues of equity in the male, you know, in this male-dominated um, industry you thrive so beautifully in. That time we didn't actually realize that we had a disadvantage. We didn't. And even if we did, there was no voice with which to to speak up. We didn't have the voice. There was nobody to speak. We couldn't speak for ourselves because. The, the atmosphere of the environment was not such that it is now where there is a realization that there really is some imbalance. So all we need to do was just to fight for the position. If the people just want to say, okay, then we'll have one, or, or when, you, when you are going for employment, at the time, maybe your father was the person, you just try and push you quickly inside and all, all of that. But there was no, there was really no voice. And we didn't realize, we didn't actually realize there was any sort of um, active systemic barrier for us. We didn't realize because we believed that we were supposed to be wives, we were supposed to be mothers, we were supposed to be at home. You know, we were always running, running from the office to the house. I still remember when I would take my children to maybe go and swim, I was wondering everything. I would go to work. I'll take them to school. I would um, have to take them to maybe for their games, and I'll be in my suit in the hot sun, sweating, with my, sweating from the top of my head to my feet, and I'll be saying to myself that. But you know, the children were important, so I didn't really think about it, you know? And there was nobody else, because if you're not doing that, they'll, they'll just be asking you, and so who is with the children at home? That's the question that people will be asking, asking you. So now, today, if they ask a young person who will be children at home, there's somebody looking after them. Why are you asking me that question? You know that kind of thing. You can answer. Then you'll be ashamed. You'll just be saying, eh, I'll soon go home. Eh, can you come? That kind of thing. So it was much difficult. It was difficult, but we didn't realize that there was a path. So my peers got to SM in 12 years, and I got to SM in 36 years. Um, this person says, my Instagram account was at both personal and business accounts. What can I do to, reco to recover my account? I have tried all the necessary steps from the Instagram team. And um, the second part of that question says, how do I improve my visibility on Google My Business? The reviews every month is usually low. For your Instagram account, 
there is I, I don't know what um, what you've done so far to unlock it but sometimes you have to go to the back end of Facebook there's there are some back ends in Facebook um, some uh, policies that you have to follow there are some policies that you have to follow that it can you might be able to get it back and there's some um, there's a way to be able to help you to get it back but if that's not possible then it means you have to open another one you have to try and open another one if it's not possible so what there are measures there are actually measures to take there are ids um the your ids it will ask for so for following the policy so if you follow the policy at the end of the day um so policy and rules it will the rules and regulations it will unlock it. You will get the you'll get your handle back. But if not then then um the second one for visibility on Google. Now I'll tell you one thing. Um if you check on Instagram, if you see Instagram, Facebook advertises on Facebook advertises WhatsApp. They advertise WhatsApp on Instagram. Google advertises Google. They advertise on WhatsApp. They advertise on Instagram. They advertise on each other's platforms. Now there's a place of digital advertising. There's a place of digital advertising. Apart from the building of your platform, there are some advertising that you have to do. The paid ads. The time when just organic that is just posting and um, everyday consistency the time when it was working was two years ago right now it is paid ads that helps you to build fastest for me i want to find out if we have assistive technologies particularly for those um with disabilities and uh, the stem related courses because we work among the deaf, and they are actually very good with science-related courses. So what are available that can enable them also and, and navigate this space? Then the internship opportunities that was mentioned, I would have wanted us because we have young people in the house that are a bit more specific. Then for those of them that are already in STEM, that are not in STEM but they are arts-related, what respites do they have? What is the solution? They also want to do. They feel once you say it is, it's only those that are in science that can do innovation, do technology. All that is not for us in the art, art or commercial se uh, sector. What can we do? Because teachers are here. They could also help in passing down those information to them as young persons. Thank you very much. For well, that uh, physical disability, there are some. Uh, technology apps, but I cannot give you their names now. But I'll, I'll promise you that I'm going to do a research and give you that. If you notice, there are some phones that, when you buy your phone, you have this uh, uh, challenge, disability uh, assessment, yes. So technology has gone beyond just, they don't neglect anyone in technology. They carry everybody along. And like you said, we have noticed that um, such students that are, I don't want to say they are physically challenged because they have good knowledge. They can see and they can use their hands properly. So they, they will have a specialized uh, technology design for them to use. And because a lot of them are techie savvy, they might not speak, but you know, because softwares, there are a couple of softwares they can use to achieve all of this. Then for those of them that are not in science, digital technology is not only for science students. Why I'm saying that is that you can have lawyers now that can handle cases online, arbitrations, they, they use it for, you can use the video, you use the technology to bring in your profession. 
into it. Then another thing, like the ones that are in literature, you don't have to have a physical book to sell yourself. You can have your book in e-copies, if you're a good writer, and you sell them on Amazon. So what technology does is that it translates your businesses. If you're a fashion designer, like I mentioned, there are different kinds of equipment that you can use to create designs. You can even go online, have apps that you put the design together and you send to your client. So, digital technology is not only for students that are in STEM. It goes a long way. It's for all professions. It's now time for you to find your own need. In rural area, whereby they are not exposed to technology as well, how do they join online business? The rural areas. Now, I would say, I will tell you that an average Nigerian, an average Nigerian or African village right now has network. They have connectivity. There are people who, if they don't have, they, they might not have access to a, con a phone that connects. But they have a phone. Your grandmother in the village, your grandfather in the village, they have phones. They have phones. So, like I told you, these opportunities, just with a smartphone, there are people in rural areas that I've seen that have gotten it. They don't mind going to maybe the uh, stream to go get connectivity. And they will, at the end of the day, they connect. There are these kids um, from, I don't know if it's Kenya or somewhere, from Uganda. Those kids, they, what they did was through dancing. Through dancing, they lit. Through dancing, with whatever phone device they had. You don't have to have a big device, you don't have to have. That's why I told you that. Google, Google right now, they give preeminent, they give, um, they give markings. They, it is very strict markings on your search engine optimization that your website, your uh, app, it has to be seen by the phone. It's very important because they know that people connect to the phone. They might not have the laptop, they might not have the um, tablet, but they will have a phone, a small phone, that will be able to connect to Facebook. It will be able to do little videos. It will be able to do something. And if they want it so bad, they will work it out to get it. The hallmark of the event saw Mrs. Funke Agbo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, being decorated as a patron of Whipton, while other facilitators were decorated with a Whipton badge and scarf, and gifts were also handed to them. We are so grateful that you find time to come and share with us today. On that note, on behalf of our global convener, in person of Her Excellency, Yaluda Labalosan, MFR, FIODJP, we are making you an ambassador for women in type radio and professional development. <laughs> <laughs> From the tripartite uh, organization that uh, ECOWAS Pepe, Women in Tabernacle and Professional Development Network, Bumara Foundation, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. On behalf of um, Bumara Foundation, we say a big thank you to you and for all you there for us. Thank you, man. Thank you all very much. Please don't forget me, because I won't forget you. Thank you. 
The committee, comprising of Webden, ECOWAS Febway, and Bomara Foundation executives who put up the event, were also recognized and appreciated with gifts. We have a real small gift to appreciate my own dear sister and my mother, Yalo de Alaban Lossi. She's not here today. This is for Yalo de. Yeah, we are presenting to her. I'm not here. Madam Doctor, please do the presentation to me. Okay, so um, on behalf of everyone of us here, I want to present this beautiful gift to Chief Mrs. Afi Ubanga, CEO of Webney. So we can behold the beauty of the gift. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I love you. Thank you. So, um, in our tradition as Africans and um, in the Yoruba Parliament, there's this um, saying that the biggest masquerade is the one that you that comes ahead that dances last so on this note we have a, a beautiful presentation to our own dear mommy a mentor a mother life a role model an enigma a woman of timber and caliber that has contributed so much to the development of um, women in Nigeria and abroad. And um, this is no other person than Chief Mrs. Alaba Oluwashen Lossi. Iyalo de Yoruba Land, Iyalo de Elba Land, Iyalo de Alaba Lossi. F-I-O-D-J-P. So we hand over to the national coordinator. Uh, I'm the president of ECOWAS Fairway, Global Convener of the WMD, mother of Buma. She's everywhere. She's our mother. I'm here representing her. I'm receiving this on behalf of her. Um, I know she will appreciate it. And we wish you the best of luck with her exam mind. And uh, we look forward to a, a greater collaboration next year. Yes. And we'll all come together with more numbers, sound mind, good health, and a settled country in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to appreciate our 2023 Committee on International Women's Day. They work tirelessly. Yes for us to be here today. And like my sister rightly said, 2024, we will move to a sure. home hotel yes. and suit, where we will have the entire hall for women to relax and have fun and network. On that note, we want to appreciate uh, Bomara Foundation, the president, a person of Aja, Bola and also, we want to appreciate our mother, Yalo de Alabama, who is on our way, she's still on our way for me. We want Thank to you. Appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> It was a beautiful time to unwind and network with one another as the United Nations celebrates this day yearly on March 8th to celebrate women shattering the glass ceilings in their various fields and also to advocate for the rights of women in the workplace, family and society at large. As we always say in Webton, together we can fix it. In unity lies strength.